Anavan, let's talk about the results of the Bihar elections. Now, the results came out late yesterday night or early today morning, however you want to put it, leading to a lot of memes, of course, comparing it to the US. There were also some allegations of irregularities. But when the results finally did come out, it looks like the NDA, that's National Democratic Alliance, just managed to secure a majority. They have got 125 seats. The majority was 122. The opposition, Mahagarbandan, led by the RJD, secured 110 seats. Now, this election and these results actually raise a lot of questions. They have a lot of implications countrywide. A key aspect, of course, has been the fact that the RJD is still the single largest party. The BJP, on the other hand, performed much better than last time, whereas the major story of this election has been the decline of the JDU under Nitish Kumar. It has become the junior partner in the alliance. Of course, the other major story was the emergence of the left, or the re-emergence of the left, rather, having secured 16 seats, and they are likely to be a very strong force in the new assembly. We talked to Pranjal of NewsClick to analyze some of these implications, to see what lies ahead for Nitish Kumar, of course, but also for Bihar and the future of opposition politics in the country. Thank you, Pranjal, for joining us. So, uh, we looked at the numbers, and the NDA seems all set to form the government, although very interesting election, of course, a lot of uh, ups and downs, a lot of uncertainty till late in the night. So uh, quickly to start with, before we go into some of the topics in detail, what are your maybe three top takeaways from the election? So Prashant, my three, uh, three main takeaways from the elections would be that RJD has emerged as a single largest party in Bihar election, which reflects that Tejasvi has done well, RJD has done well. And this is despite the fact that one, one, and one, one and a half months ago, nobody was even assuming that RJD would be in fight. Second, and the most important thing that left has revived in Bihar, they had a strong base a few uh, years ago, a couple of decades ago, they were present in strong numbers in the assembly. But after that, they were nowhere there. But they still had mobilization on the ground. And as a result, you have 16 uh, members from the left parties uh, in the assembly now, two from CPIM, two from CPI, and 10, uh, 12 from Liberation. And the third most important thing would be that Nitish Kumar has lost the stature that he had uh, in Bihar for being the chief minister for so long, and also being one of the, uh, also being the key partner in the NDA alliance. Absolutely, and we'll go through these one by one. So first of all, the key point you mentioned was uh, the RJD itself, and like you said, about three months ago, everyone was predicting a massive uh, victory for the NDA. People were talking about maybe 200 seats. RJD was nowhere in the picture. And in about, about less than a month, maybe two months, they really turned it around. Now, some of it, of course, was because of the strength of at least some alliance partners. But what Tejasvi seems to have done is also sort of uh, begin to create a narrative as a credible leader which he really needs to expand on in the coming months and years as well. Right. So actually, if you look at the 2019 Lok Sabha elections and uh, the vote share that the current NDA in 2020 uh, would have had in 2019 Lok Sabha election, it was 54.32%. And by that rate, they should have won 223 seats right now. Mm -hmm. But right now, they are limited to 125 in total. So that tells you that what the situation in last one year has changed, and specifically in last two, two and a half months, has changed. RJD has done phenomenally well. They've become the single largest party. My personal understanding is that this entire narrative of uh, one taking from the social justice that the Lalu Prashad Yadav had made ensured in Bihar or had promised in Bihar, picking up from there and then bringing in this entire narrative of employ employment. Bihar has seen one of the massive unemployment rates in the country. So in, uh, this entire <clears throat> agenda of ensuring economic justice as well has done wonders for uh, RJD there. But things are still very complicated. I wouldn't completely say that it's just this entire narrative of ensuring jobs and economic justice has done wonders for RJD. If that would have been the case, and if just, just looking at the numbers of people participating in the rallies, if we would have gone by that, RJD should have done much better. So definitely then there's another angle there that NDA specifically, BJP has been able to also 
ensure that it increases its tally because of the different cast arithmetics that they ensured different smaller parties that they came into the fold of nda and then the entire incumbency was clearly against jdu which we will come to later absolutely right and in this context uh, what i suspect remains key also is that tejasvi has the task of making sure that uh, the campaign does not end here and it keeps continuing so that because i think i think one of the criticisms that was leveled against the party was that for a long time it was basically not really very much there on the ground and the time was just not enough to catch up that that's that that's one of the most important reasons why rjd has not done better that all of suddenly you can't land up one one and a half months two months before the elections and start making these grand promises doing election campaigns and then assume that you would be able to defeat a party like bjp and win elections so and that has been the problem even in the last term that even in the last term rjd was the single largest party but somehow they were missing from the they were missing as an opposition even even during this entire phase of covid-19 lockdown the problems that migrants had to suffer uh, the rise, the muzaffarnagar shelter case the only consistent force on the ground that way was the left parties nobody else absolutely and pranjal coming to the next point which is regarding the performance of the left now uh, interestingly this i think is one aspect which news click of course has covered but also many reporters on the ground were fairly certain from uh, the very early phase of the campaign that the left would have a much better performance and in fact a very good performance and this i think indicates the nature of the consistent work that the left has been doing in the sections in bihar where it's strong so could you maybe also take us through uh, the kind of build up that was happening so as i uh, pointed out earlier that even i mean if you look on the streets and in bihar the the role of the opposition was being played by the left parties whether it's cpim whether I, whether it's liberation cpi they were consistently raising issues of the people issues of em employment crime rate even in the flood affected areas and then about the migrant workers so left has been there so you have to understand one thing that in states like bihar despite whatever the alliances you have until unless you don't have an organization on the ground and i think that is what is applicable throughout the country that if you don't have organization on the ground you will not be able to convert your um, support base into electoral base or even in terms of you won't be able to convert it into votes and that's where the left parties have specifically in uh, bihar gained one because of consciously being the voice of the people raising issues and second having organization to make sure that this alliance works out so i mean the left has made sure that in seats where they were strong but not uh, but they could have not won without the support of rjd and congress they have made sure that those votes get transferred and in the areas where the opposition i mean the mahagathbandhan other candidates were fighting they have also transferred their votes to them so this could have not been done without the uh, without left having an organization there and left has built an organization because of raising people's issues as i have said and having a 16 member block in bihar assembly is a big thing to happen so i think that is where left will play an important role issues like employment issues like crime uh, covid mismanagement have also become election agenda because of a constant pressure from the left parties in the mahagathbandhan and on the streets hopefully left will continue to do the same in the assembly as well absolutely and coming to the final point of course nitish kumar's uh, record so to speak he is probably set to be the chief minister once again but what is uh, definitely going to be sure is that he won't have the same clout as before uh, he will not probably have the same amount of say when it comes to cabinet appointments when it comes to decisions and what we are likely to see is that the bjp will probably take over much more of the levers of government than before so in that sense this has been quite a setback for him obviously i mean if you look at jdu they have lost 28 seats in comparison to 2015 with a vote share loss of almost 2.2% and it was it's very clear from the election results that the entire anti incumbency was being faced by jdu not the bjp 
so BJP has been clear, cleverly able to do that. While on the other hand, you also need to understand that the Lok Jan Shakti Party, which is LJP, has been able to narrow, cut down JDU to an extent in a lot of the seats, while BJP doesn't seem to have suffered any loss because of LJP or a very minor loss. So now with all these combinations being there, BJP having 74 seats in the assembly, even if as promised earlier, a lot of BJP people have said that Nitish Kumar would be chief minister. I personally think Nitish Kumar would be a chief minister who will be continuously dictated by the right. Bharatiya Janta Party in Bihar. Mm -hmm. BJP will have a bigger say, not just because they are a bigger party in Bihar, but also they are in the central union government. And the most important thing, as uh, Nitish Kumar has himself um, announced in these elections that this is going to be his last election. So actually, if you look at JDU, there's no second uh, generation of leadership which is there in JDU with Nitish Kumar announcing that I'm not going to be uh, fighting elections anymore and this is my last election. I don't think Nitish Kumar is in any position to push through his agenda. Right. And if if his entire narrative of uh, ensuring Jungle Raj ends, development comes to Bihar, if that would have worked, he would have not lost 28 seats in Bihar. So Nitish Kumar, even though would be chief minister, but the big brother role will be played by the BJP there. BJP is going to remain the strong force there. It's going to remain the stronger partner in the alliance. And what's going to happen in future, you never know. Nitish Kumar has been named as... Uh, Paltu Ram quite often. Is he going to remain chief minister for five years? One will have to see. Right. The possibility does remain that six months down the line or one year down the line, the BJP could really assert its claim. As well. And and why would BJP not do that? They have exactly. 74 seats. They have clearly emerged as an important, one of the most important players in Bihar where the regional parties had dominance over the last two decades. So why would not BJP want to capture the entire state? Absolutely. And in this context, Pranjal, a final question regarding the implications on national politics itself. So we have a situation where uh, the BJP's model is now pretty much clear. It has a huge amount of money it's throwing in. There is a clear use of schemes in a particular way as far as uh, targeted scheme, targeted benefits are concerned, which benefit a particular section of the population. There is a lot of calculation of caste and other arithmetic, which sort of, which helps them choose the right kind of candidate. And despite all this, we have also seen that they have not really been as successful in state elections as they should be considering these factors. Right. So in the coming state elections, what do you see as the chances before the opposition when it comes to putting forward a resistance to this machine? See, I would say, I mean, people are, I mean, even though NDA has formed the government there, I don't think it's such a clear majority that they have got. They have just escaped through it. They were 122 was the majority mark. They're at 125. So it's not overly in favor of the NDA alliance. Of course, they have won. But it's, I also personally feel it's not something to be disheartened about. Actually, there's an interesting fact. If you look at the vote share of the NDA and the Mahagad Bandhan, the difference is hardly of 0.1%, which comes to something like 13,000 votes. So, uh, which is, I mean, which tells you, I mean, that in the long run, if you, and as you rightly pointed out, the kind of infrastructure, machinery, money, and organization that the BJP has, whether it's uh, whether it's Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, anywhere else, if you want to counter them, you'll have to come together to fight it out. Right. The other important factor here would be, in my personal understanding, would be Congress. They have they fought on 70 seats and they performed badly. They will also have to understand that in states like these, where the regional parties have a better chance of defeating the uh, BJP or somebody, they should leave more space for the regional parties and not, not push themselves to, uh, not push the regional parties to give them more seats. So that's there. As far as national elections are concerned, obviously BJP has a clear upper hand right now. I mean, its impact on uh, nation is concerned. Uh, they have a lot of money, the infrastructure that they have, it has, uh, it could have not been countered. It has not been countered. If these different regional parties and progressive secular forces in different other parts of the country uh, fight together, they still might be in a position to give a tough challenge to BJP. 
if they fight separately i don't think that's happening and that's also very evident from bipol results in in state like uttar pradesh where uh bjp has like one majority of the seats with one seat going to sp and bsp winning none so how else would you counter precisely and also like you pointed out the importance of having strong organization on the ground and continuously throughout uh the term pushing back exactly i mean and one thing needs to be understand even if it's a strong regional party in any state they will have to go on the ground and if they are in the government work more ferociously if they are in the opposition connect with people you can't just land up one month in advance and think that you might defeat bjp with such a strong um, digital infrastructure money infrastructure and muscle infrastructure so alliances stitching progressive secular alliances together connecting on the ground and building organization i think would be the way forward for opposition parties in the country absolutely thank you so much prajal for speaking to us that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world until then keep watching news click Thank <laughs> you.